My man talking more shit when you're not on stage. When you get on stage, he's stepping up. Come here, Tyler. Step ass Tyler right here. Step ass Tyler right here. Talk the most shit when we're not on stage. When you get on stage, he's like, I wish you'd have done that on stage. <laughs> We got our arm down. She's still got the yellow kids. She's gone about to get a new white one. So, let's come up. Man, what, is, what the fuck it is, man? No, it is, man. I'll be on two out right now. Bitch got the, got the streets in a frenzy, man. We got BC with it, man. Fuck, you know it is. Go get it, man. Go get it, man. Took 200 to my jeweler. <laughs> Took 200 to my motherfucking jeweler, baby. That's what I'm trying to tell you, goofy niggas, man. I got a fucking car, stupid. Yeah, nigga. Hundon. They got a Hundon in cars. I left a wild double piece home today, man. I just bought the, the, the diamond chains out today. Still a little 70, yeah. Father shit going to bat, dude. You spending that real thing. You spending that real thing, you stay your dumb ass in the front. You feel me? Yeah, man. There you go. Man, all legal money goes to the bank. Fuck is they get it for, man? Let me get that legal money on these horns now. It's, it's over. It's over. They shouldn't let a real nigga in the game. Give a nigga the bag. Walking through your cup. Well, walk through getting a couple bannies. They think I'm making them. They think I'm the jeweler. Yeah. For real, they think I'm the jeweler. How much of the shit I can think I'm the jeweler? For real. Tell them, man, I know I'm fucking with. Okay, <laughs> yo, you have to tell them. I already know I'm fucking with RK, baby. I just took 200 to the jeweler. Facts. 400 now. <laughs> yo, 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 what it is, people? We is back. Never day on Keep It G News. And they went Baltimore, man. To talk about a series of events. Y'all know how I do with these events, man. This pertaining to two rappers. You know, this is a story you might not never heard before. But it's about YGG Tay. You know, it's a lot of videos on Tay. You feel me? So, for the people in the comments, from my city, don't act like this is the first video ever been done on YGG Tay. I am sick and tired of people from Baltimore in my comments, man. I promise you. And everything in this video is alleged. I don't have no first-hand knowledge. You understand? It's all rumor and speculation in my perception. You feel me? This ain't got nothing to do with what people told me. Let's get that clear. <laughs> you understand? But in this video, we're going to talk about two rappers. YGG Tay, who you just saw in the beginning. And you seen this man, Montana Burnett. We're going to touch on him, you know, because he's pivotal to this story. And a beef, alleged beef that YGG Tay had with a rapper that started over who got the most money. Now, in this situation, wasn't just about who got the most money. No, it wasn't just about money. You no, know, it's a lot of people with money in the city. This is about which rapper has the most money. Now, why is that important? Who knows? And why did a situation that started off over something that was so minor spur out of control? Allegedly, you know? Because you're talking about money, you know, everybody getting, we all getting money. Why does it matter which rapper got the most? I never understood that. But in this situation, like I say, I'm going to break down a series of events. And how that, what we just watched, turned On into 10, this. On 15, 2023, at 1 17 p.m., Baltimore County Police responded to the intersection of Bexhill Road and Cambridge Court. Baltimore County, Maryland, 21214 for a subject suffering from gunshot wound. The victim, Julian Lamont Allen, was transported to Sinai Hospital, where he was determined he was suffering from six gunshot wounds to the lower extremities. The Baltimore County Police Violent Crimes Unit responded to aid in the investigation. A second victim, Devontae Nathaniel Harrison, had been with Allen at the time of the shooting. However, he was not struck. Harrison advised that on 10-15... 2013 at approximately 1 p.m. He and Allen drove to his residence located at 8 Cambridge Court. 
Windsor Mill, Maryland, 21214. As they pulled up to Harrison residence, they observed two black male subjects in his yard. Harrison and Allen immediately exited the vehicle and began to chase the two subjects who fled over a fence to the rear of the residence. Harrison and Allen were unable to catch the two subjects and returned to 8 Cambridge Court. Just as they were walking back up to the rear yard, a third black male subject walked up the driveway to the side of the residence and asked them if they had seen two guys. The subject then pulled out a handgun and began firing at Harrison and Allen. Harrison and Allen fled through the yard to the front of the house and down the driveway. The unknown subject continued to fire at Harrison and Allen as they fled on foot out of Cambridge Court toward Baxter Road. Once they reached the far corner of the intersection, Allen collapsed. An inspection of the exterior of 8 Cambridge Court revealed that several fired cases in the side yard, along with several items that had been removed from the outside of Cambridge Court. During the course of this investigation, Detective Reese, badge number 3416, and Jones, badge number 4936, developed a suspect who was later identified as Michael Eddie Brock, black male. 3-15-1993. Brock was brought to Baltimore County Police Headquarters on something 16-13 to be interviewed by Detective Reese and Jones of the Violent Crimes Unit. Michael Brock was interviewed post-Miranda. He advised that on 10-15-2013, he went to the location of the crime, front of 8 Cambridge Court 21214, with two other associates for the purpose of committing a burglary. He advised that he walked outside of 8 Cambridge Court as a lookout at which time he saw two subjects arrive out front in the Silver Agra. Upon seeing the subjects arrive, he exited his vehicle and walked up toward 8 Cambridge Court to the rear. While at the rear, he was confronted by two subjects who he advised asked him who he was. Brock advised that he became concerned and removed the pistol from his waistband and began to shoot at the two subjects as they ran away. The victim, Julian Allen, was struck with bullets about his body, causing him to collapse on the sidewalk. Victor Allen advised that he was in fear for his life. Victor Allen was transported to Sinai Hospital with life-threatening injuries. The second victim, Devontae Harrison, was not struck by bullets but was running alongside victim Allen. He was advised that he thought he was going to die. The vehicle driven to the area by Brock was identified as a 2000 black two-door Honda, Arizona registered. Now, that was the paperwork. On YGG Tech. No. Now, I told y'all how Baltimore is when it come down to stamping anybody. You know Baltimore ain't with that. And it looked like to me since I've been covering these topics that Baltimore has a habit of trying to tear its own down before they reach their peak. Saying it with Shorty Shorty. I just watched a video with, uh, on um, the Stop Snitching video. And I seen that they tried to do it with Los. And I remember it back then. But looking back at it, it's like, damn, I'm starting to see a pattern of Baltimore trying to tear his zone down. But y'all know how it is. Like I say, Baltimore, we ain't stamping anybody. So when his paperwork got released on Tay, you know, some people felt like, you know, he was a rat. Me, personally, I ain't want nothing to do with it. <laughs> Straight up. And most people didn't want nothing to do with it. Because at the end of the day, it was always this cloud over Tay, you know. I don't want to say it was a glare. Because it wasn't nothing positive, you know. Even though his talent was glaring, I'm going to get to his talent. But I'm talking about the cloud around his name, you know. People knew what came with YGG Tay. And if you cross him, allegedly, you feel me? Like I say, I ain't got no first-hand knowledge. You know, but when you're in the streets, you hear things. You hear from the grapevine. You understand? And we all knew because this paperwork got released by a guy by the name of... Um, I forgot the guy's name. His name not even really important for this story. But he was arrested. And I'm going to show you what happened. Or what the feds as a legend happened behind all this paperwork. But it got brought to the world by two raw. You know, he was the rapper. And like I told you, they was beefing over, allegedly, who had the most money. But like I say, most people, if you really read the paperwork, you can see that he ain't tell. You know what I mean? But you can also understand that YGG Tay being a rapper, how he would take this and perceive this. And it didn't go well for either party. Keep it real. And that's just my opinion. So, it's just paperwork, you know. You know, they played that little back and forth. 
Most of us on the music. One the sound here that's really moving all the smack. No exaggerating lines, about to give you all facts. I'm the one that bought it back. Couple bricks inside the act. I was down to my last. I'm the one that had to attack. We want war with them, yeah. We want war with them, yeah. Nigga, disrespect the game, now I want them now. I get my young in the little dub and tell them, gun them down. We ain't pulling out no pistols, we throw 100 rounds. They playing possum on his block, he better not come around. Got stack these big face on us. My team don't want for none. Nigga, we stunt. We ain't worrying about none. Long as that money keep coming. We're hunting. Turn nothing into something. All out traps still jumping. Ain't a nigga in the city. Fuck more bitches than me. Ain't a rapper in the city. Got more money than me. And my jewelry always got people staring at me. And I do right for my bitches. Keep them in double C. Let your girlfriend know me. Presidential role. Paid cash for the big B. Please don't easily approach me. Rockin' five rings like Kobe. He get talking cash, nigga, just show me. Five chains on my neck. What's that? Trophies. 41 millimeter. Go rolling. Talking down on my name. The dumb. You don't know me. Hear your niggas talk cash. That bag show me. Don't get out of name. You dumb as shit, you don't know that. Fuck a stupid bitch. Count up scroll up like I'm Kodak. Can't talk that gangsta shit. Around here, you I been getting money, what you want me post a throwback? Look like I just hopped up by the cool Got all my ice on my I just took 200 to my jewel They bluffing, boo, don't let them niggas fool you Don't let them fool you, boo Put you up on game, I'm about to school I'm about to school, I'm about to school you First time meeting money back 70k in the Gucci bag Stay sprawling around my whole fit Fuck around and take your whole bitch 30 in it, that's a whole clip we just murk a nigga on his own block We don't share no pistols, told that one Glock We don't want your freaks, we got our own thought Bitch, that ain't your jewelry, buy your own watch Still yelling, nigga, free the gang I've been trapping, I've been rapping Trying to stay up in my lane Feds came through, they took my niggas out the game I've been stressing, I've been praying I've been going through some things I swear I love my niggas and I swear I never change I never change, I'm yelling free to game It's funny and these murders made us famous I say my savage, my warty, my ride or die, my bully My double G, one, two punch, I ain't Kobe Streets made us famous, we should've been more low-key Now the fans after the only nigga know me They didn't got my nigga general, didn't know they was on to you You know I got your nigga, know my money really plentiful Had the same dream, yeah, our dream was so identical Getting money, fuck that bitch, and that's what we was into I just blessed the block with all this bullshit shit uh, nigga, pull up round the way just to talk shit Drinks, uh, he trying to show us why she think he fussing oh, yeah. uh, That rolling ain't no president on car shit uh, got that, man. All my bitches bad and they been bougie That was glaring at the time that YGG Tay was the best rapper But this alleged beef was over who had the most money or which rapper had the most money And it got bad, you know so bad that, in my opinion, YGG Tay was Now, a shot. lot of people never seen this video, but if you listen to the lyrics, Tay spoke on this, you know, and it took him a while to speak on it. He ain't just come straight out at it. He got shot. I think it probably came out months later, but I got sent this picture the same day of, you know. I think I was one of the people that told people, like, yo, Tay got shot the other day. You feel me? Because it didn't come out. It didn't make news or nothing, you know. It kind of got swept under the rug, but... If you was YGG Tay and you know the cloud that was around his name, you would think that it wasn't going to go like this. But if you hear him speak on it, he talked about how he was shot in a moving car. Well, this is the car. And at the time, you know, people was wondering like, damn, this shit going to get bad. You feel me? Because for the guy that had the cloud like Tay had over him and the money that it was obvious that he had, you would think that some things was going to happen. And that's what takes me into the death of Just. Lennon Shelley. The Baltimore Police Department needs your help identifying two murder suspects. On October 31st of 2018, at approximately 2.15 p.m., 
Southwest District officers were dispatched to a reported shooting at Jerry's Market, located in the 200 block of North Monastery Avenue. As a result of the shooting, 33-year-old Leonard Shelley was pronounced dead at the scene. After reviewing surveillance camera footage, homicide detectives learned two armed men chased the victim into the market and fatally shot him. Anyone with information about the murder of 33-year-old Leonard Shelley... Now, Leonard Shelley was from Emerson Village. And we're going to find out later on in this video that this crime got solved, you know. So I think, for the most part, the streets may have had it wrong, you know, because that, that was the word in the streets that, yo, I think yo might have, yeah, man, you feel me? That was the word, you know, that's what was getting traveled, you know, that's what that was getting put out there to the people. So when he got murdered, and then it was on video, people was like, damn, that was ruthless on Halloween night. Tragic situation, but like I said, yo, T was upset. Allegedly, you know, this is what the feds are saying. This is all documented. You know, I'm not bringing nothing new to the table. I'm just giving y'all the angle of how it was in the streets at the time, you know, because it was a good time back then. You know, like I told y'all, this was around the time, and I keep saying that that rap was on the rise in Baltimore. So with any rise, when you're dealing with an urban environment, it's going to come crime. And after this shooting with Tay, Alleged shooting with Tay. We knew things. So I'm at the intersection of Appleton and Lanville Street, where, as you can see, there is an extremely large police presence. And we've just learned that three people were shot here earlier tonight. The call came out a little before 10 o'clock. We're told that those three shooting victims include an 18 year old woman, a 25 year old man, and a 20 year old man. All of them were taken to hospitals. There is no word on their condition from police. Um, we do know that they are still looking for suspects. If you can just look there at the intersection there, um, right in the middle, you can see all of those bullet markers. I counted up to 54, um, and as you can see, there is still a very large police presence here, as I said. Lots of detectives walking around, a lot of people who seem to be neighbors walking around as, we as well. So, again, what we know is that three people have been shot, an 18-year-old, a 25-year-old, and a 20-year-old. They were all taken to hospitals. There is no word on their condition. Three people Hopefully shot on Edwardson Street. Now, at the time, you know, people didn't pay this no mind. You know, it's shootings every day in Baltimore, you feel me? So people just looked at it like, dang, you know, three people got shot. Unfortunately, an 18 year old girl died in this situation. But a week later, a different picture started to get painted, at least to me. Candles, balloons, and a life honored on a cold, windy night here in West Baltimore. People gather on Appleton Street, surrounded by police, to honor 27 year old local rapper Ryan Brunson, who was found shot to death inside this home last Monday. The second murder to happen on this street in just one week. We was praying for the family. We pray that another family don't have to go through this. Just love. We just that's what we spreading tonight, love. Neighbor Shannon Craig helping organize tonight's gathering, as well as one held in honor of 18-year-old Taylor Davis just last week. The teen was shot and killed just feet away from where Brunson was killed in a triple shooting March 11th. What can we do different? How can we stop this pain? Um, how, how can we make a change? People here choosing the color red as a representation of love they're trying to pump back into the community. Baltimore has so much to offer. Craig appreciating the large police presence here tonight. Officers on foot, cruisers at every corner, including this armored vehicle. And the street well lit. Two was murdered on that same block three days later or a week later. And that's when it all started to make sense. It looked like to me that, you know, Though three people got shot and an innocent person died, that there was a beef going on, you know, between two sides. And if you hear Tay talk about it, he had hit us from east to west. You know, this is something for the most part that the streets was aware of, you know. Because you're seeing what happened Hello, to the first conscious, That's how federal prosecutors describe the leader of a West Baltimore drug gang. A judge called his crimes the most serious a person can commit during an emotional sentencing this afternoon. WJZ investigator Mike Helgman is live at the federal courthouse downtown with the punishment. Mike. Vic and Denise, it's likely he'll never get out of prison. Convicted killer Montana Baronet, that's his name. He apologized to family members of one of his victims for what they believed he did. His relatives said 
Baronet is not a monster, but the judge didn't believe he was truly remorseful. Montana Baronet, convicted of murdering six people as part of the vicious West Baltimore drug gang known as Train to Go, will serve two life prison sentences. In a social media post, Baronet once wrote, F you haters, I kill you all if I could. Baltimore police once called him the city's number one trigger puller. The new police commissioner designee told me why he attended the sentencing. It was important for me to see this outcome uh, firsthand so I'll know just what's at stake and just how to make sure my police department performs at a high level and partners with our partners uh, going forward. Many relatives of victims chose not to speak out of fears for their own safety, but the mother of one victim, Antonio Addison, told the judge Montana Baronet is the devil's child. Nobody can be that evil. To lose your son, she said, is the worst pain you can ever feel. Baronet murdered him on the front steps of his grandmother's home. And our heart goes out to, to all that's lost in this, in this matter. What struck me is that over the past four nights, I've met with hundreds upon hundreds of people who were born and raised and continue to live on the streets of Baltimore who don't make that choice that Mr. Baronet made. Shortly after his initial arrest, Baronet was mistakenly released and went to New York City to watch West Baltimore boxer Javonta Davis in a fight. He's been incarcerated since. Baronet's lawyer said his client has had a difficult life dealing drugs since age 13 and is a victim. Murder is such a part of the fabric of this city, he said. We live in a society that permits what goes on in Baltimore to happen. Very happy that justice one was done today with life in prison for Mr. Baronet, which guarantees that he will not be able to hurt anyone in Baltimore again. During the trial, which included co-defendants, there were reports of witness intimidation and several U.S. Marshals were assaulted, bringing some of those co-defendants here to court. So security was very tight today. They cleared out the courtroom before sentencing and people could not bring their cell phones inside. Montana Baronet, yeah, you know, all of them went down milking all them guys. But when they went down, you know, a lot of people on the streets was like, dang, he done lost his muscle. But when you got money, Money comes power. And when you also got money, people tend to gravitate to you. You feel me? Especially if you was in the line of work that the feds is alleging that Tay, Tay was in. I'm just giving y'all how it was on the streets and what we was thinking, you know. But this is all we on the outside, you know. This is not no inside knowledge. So once Two Raw got killed, we just knew, I'm talking about the streets, that this wasn't over. And that's what takes me into the death of YGG Tonight, Scratch. Baltimore County Police are still trying to identify a body discovered yesterday in Patapsco Valley State Park. WMAR 2 News, Jeff Hager joins us right now with more on the discovery. Jeff. Jamie, this is the second body that's turned up in the park. The other was back in April. And in both cases, investigators had to send the bodies off for autopsies to determine whether foul play was involved. Thistle and River Roads in the Patapsco Valley State Park near the area where a woman walking her dog on Monday evening made a gruesome discovery. The dog ran off into an area around Thistle Road, and when she went back and found the dog, she realized that the dog had located Now, YGG Stretch was YGG Tate Man, and it came to find out later on there was a lot of speculation around Stretch's name. Now, I ain't going to get into the speculation, but a lot of people thought this came from one side. Like I said, I'm just giving y'all the street angle. This is not no inside knowledge. A lot of people thought that this came from one side, you know, because you just had the death of two raw, you know, the beef order, who got the most money. Now, I don't know if it's connected to Tay or not. I'm just giving y'all the perception of the streets and how we viewed it from the outside looking at. You understand? But when it came out that Stretch was kidnapped, you know, we knew he was gone for a while before he actually got found. You know, that was rumor in the streets. Like, dang, was somebody kidnapped YGG Stretch. Then he ended up dead, but then you find out later on that his death was totally unrelated to the situation because two people got arrested.
Well, police in Baltimore County arrest these two men in connection with a body found in Patapsco State Park. Renardo Whitehead and Dion Bowler are both charged with murder. Police say the victim died from multiple gunshot wounds. Now, the victim's body was found back in June by a woman who was walking her dog along a trail near River and Thistle Roads. He was later identified as Glenroy St. Oban Copeland of Elkridge. Now, at this point, the streets is on fire, y'all. It's a lot of killing in the city. You know, this is Baltimore. This is not a situation where it's just one particular group. No, it's a lot of groups that's getting busy all over the city, you know. <laughs> We've been seeing the indictments. I might even cover a few more on this channel. And this is all going on at the same time. You got different crews murdering. So with any fire comes the water, you know. It's like a firefighter, you know, you got to put the flames out. So how you put the flame out? Arrest YGJ. Steven. The police are still awaiting the results of an autopsy and not yet learned the identity of the man found yesterday. Baltimore rapper YGG Tay is facing prison time after being convicted of federal drug and firearm charges. The 26-year-old's real name is Devontae Harrison. He was convicted of conspiracy to distribute fentanyl, heroin, cocaine, and crack cocaine, as well as being a felon in possession of a firearm. Police say they watched him make quick stops to conduct narcotics transactions, then travel to a casino in Delaware with the money he made. Since Sentencing is set for a later date. He's facing the possibility of multiple years for each of the charges. So why did take catch 15 years? You know, 15 years on this uh, handgun charge. And I told y'all before how this go. If they can't get you for what they want you on, they're going to get you on something. More than likely, it's going to be drug related. I think Tay got over sentenced in this case, 15 years. And for what I understand, why did Tay have no bad criminal record? So he should have known or... At least the streets should have known that the fix was in from that sentence. You know, a lot of times they wanted to get you off the street so they could do their investigation. You know, this is a typical tactic that they use. So once they got Tay off the streets, I told y'all how this go, y'all. Not saying that Tay wasn't respected, but it was some fear there too, you know. And a lot of times when people get you off the streets because they're scared of them, that's when the people start talking. People start gossiping, you know. A lot of times gossiping to the police. And that's what leads me into why you take getting indicted for six months. A murders. Baltimore man who gained notoriety after beating nearly a dozen attempted murder charges has been named in a federal indictment that targets one of the most dangerous gangs in the city. Alexa Ashwell has details on the crimes he's accused of committing and the message leaders are hoping to send. This indictment names six people allegedly associated with the black gorilla family gang. One of them David Warren, in this, described as a contract killer. This newly unsealed federal indictment charging six men associated with the notorious Black Gorilla family gang includes Baltimore rapper YGG Tay, or Devonte Harrison, and David Warren, who gained notoriety after beating nearly a dozen attempted murder charges beginning at the age of 14. David Warren has quite a reputation. Back in 2020, Warren was the focus of a crime and justice report. Then a father... When he died, part of me died with him. ...opened up about the murder of his son, Brian McKemmy, back in 2018. An innocent construction worker caught in the crossfire of what investigators said was an ordered hit on a member of a rival organization. My son was on the back porch putting aluminum trim around a sliding glass door. These two guys start shooting at the house. The owner of the house is in the house shooting back. My son's hit three times and died right on that porch. Warren was later arrested after investigators say he was found to be in possession of the gun that killed McKemmy. But no one has been charged with his murder until now. This federal indictment details it was Harrison who ordered the hit. Warren and another defendant, Wayne Prince, who attempted to carry out the murder, and Prince and an unindicted co-conspirator who instead murdered McKemmy. In all, this federal indictment now connecting Warren to nearly a dozen attempted murders and three murders, also including the 2018 shooting deaths of the mother and sister of a targeted rival. The women, investigators say, gunned down inside of their home 
when he couldn't be found. The black gorilla family is singularly the most significant threat to public safety in Baltimore for the past decade or longer. Years of violence and a city struggling to stop it. With this federal indictment, hope for justice, peace, and a strong message to criminals. When they come in with the heavy hammer of a federal judge and federal sentencing guidelines, you know that that's going to send a clear signal that this violence is not going to be tolerated. All six defendants are currently in custody, including Harrison and Warren. Warren is currently serving a state sentence for assault and gun Now, why did you say he's currently arrested? 15 years in federal prison. And he's still fighting these murders. Now, he just put in an appeal for the 15 years that just got struck down and denied. The judge said everything was fair. But I told y'all about Linda Shelley, you know. At the time, people thought Linda Shelley and that YGG taste shit was connected. But come to find out, it never was at all because Linda Shelley got killed by some guys up his own way. prosecutors unveiled a 33-count indictment against a West Baltimore gang. Officials say the members terrorized its village neighborhood for years. And WJZ is live. Abajoy Burnett is at police headquarters with more on this group that was called the NFL gang. Abajoy. Hi, Max. Well, federal prosecutors say the 16 men were violent and dangerous and that some allegedly committed murders in order to maintain their turf. Federal prosecutors unveiled a 33-count indictment against what they described as a brazen criminal gang that devastated their West Baltimore neighborhood. Today, I'm announcing federal charges against members of a gang responsible for murder, murder for hire, trafficking in deadly narcotics. Looked like to me, Linda Shelley was murdered behind something totally separate than what the streets thought, you know, because a lot of times the streets get it wrong. You know how it is, man. You know, sometimes when word get passed around and get passed around enough, it get twisted and tangled and wrong information get out. But I just wanted to give y'all this video to show y'all what was going on at the time. You know, how people was thinking at that particular time. And a lot of times, you got to let it all play out to see what's the truth and see what's fabricated. But this was the story of two rap guys from Baltimore. Both from the streets. Both getting money, but it's saying like to me, it can only be one king of the hill a lot of times, man. And whenever you got two guys on the same path getting money, they bound to clash. And when they clash, everybody loses. YGG take laws, two raw laws. Nobody wins in this game. You know, this is not one of them stories where it's a happy ending. <laughs> Nobody won. Everybody lost. And it all started over which rapper has the most money. But let me know how y'all feel about this in the comments, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, share, subscribe. Just keep it G News. Nigga can't do what I do. Y'all niggas can't copy me. Let's keep shit G. Let's keep shit G. Let's keep the shit G. Let's keep shit G. Let's keep shit G. Let's keep shit G.